The Australian Bureau of Statistics told us last week that our population grew significantly and at the same time unemployment dropped. That's interesting, despite the huge growth in population, we're creating jobs and our economy is performing very strongly. I don't think that's going to affect the Reserve Bank's decision on interest rates, but it is interesting if you're involved in property or interested in our economy. So today, Dr. Andrew Wilson and I discuss the implications of this in this week's Property Insider Chat. If you want to keep up to date with what's happening in our housing markets, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the little bell icon so we can let you know each time a new show comes out. Australia's population grew by 2.5% to almost 27 million people in 2023. That was the latest statistics brought out by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. We know the figures actually even more than that now. But net overseas migration drove 84% of this population growth, while natural increase accounted for about 16%. Now, on the same day, the Australian Bureau of Statistics also told us that our unemployment rate fell to 4%, with employment rising by about 40,000 people and the number of unemployed falling by about 9,000 people. And this is despite the huge growth in our population over the last year. So in today's Property Insider chat, I'd like to get the thoughts of Australia's leading housing economist, Dr. Andrew Wilson, Chief Economist of My Housing Market, on these figures. Good morning, Andrew. Yes, uh, hello, Michael. And it, it, the, all the new sets of data, we we find it hard really to come up with a new narrative because they continue to show us the same things: strong economy, uh, despite higher interest rates and population growth, migration, um, and uh, strong, um, you know, strong uh, migration. You know, it's uh, it's uh, you know all this, all the uh, predictions of a hard landing with high interest rates have proven to be nonsense and uh, haven't they yes you know, even though we're a little higher than where we were a year ago at our peak uh we're still clearly a full employment economy that's right well there were some reasons why this month uh unemployment fell a bit the australian bureau of statistics suggested that uh, more unemployed people than usual started to work and so they had to seasonally adjust things but it varied from state to state also in how the unemployment rates are going, Andrew. Yes, look, I think that um, we've still got some issues with uh, the seasonal adjustment model from the ABS. Um, uh, you, you know, it's very volatile from uh, from month to month. Um, I know that following what happened through COVID, of course, the, uh, the, the models, the methodology uh, had to be changed because weaker months became stronger months and Stronger months became weaker months because of lockdown. So, yeah, that'll take some time to recalibrate uh, as we move back into a, sort of a normal seasonal cycle. But uh, nonetheless, you know, I think that the the clear pattern remains that uh, we have a, a very strong full economy, uh, full full employment economy. And uh, the jobless, jobless figure was actually lower, down to 4% following the previous month's 4.1%. We had a big rise in uh, in the number of jobs, up by forty thousand, and that followed a thirty eight thousand job rise over April. Uh, the unemployment numbers fell uh, down by nine thousand. That followed a big rise the previous month of uh, thirty thousand. As I said, these numbers are a little volatile, and perhaps we need to take them with a grain of salt. But uh, certainly the underlying numbers. But um, the participation was rate uh, was steady, uh, still at a near record high rate of 66.8%. And um, uh, New South Wales and uh, Western Australia remain the strongest uh, economies in terms of the labour market, and, and their unemployment rates are, still have a three in front of them, Michael. I mm -hmm. think the interesting thing there is that um, only Western Australia is tracking at the same level as a year ago um, at 3.6%, but the other... The other states are tr now tracking higher than where they were a year ago. Still a, a very low rate, but uh, nonetheless uh, higher than a year ago. But those those rates a year ago were, were crazy low in the threes. We hadn't seen numbers like that since the early 70s, which, of course, was a completely different economy in Australia. Um, and, and I guess, you know, perhaps there's something to do with uh, migration, just pushing the uh, the unemployment rate up slightly over the past year. But... Uh, Interesting that Victoria has the highest unemployment rate, 4.4%. Um, you know, lots of measures out there showing that Victoria 
is the uh, the underperformer in terms of economics uh, in, uh, through the states. But I wouldn't be quibbling about a 4.4% unemployment rate, Michael. That's uh, still a... Well, we would have loved to get it down as low as that only a couple of years ago. Oh, that's right. Well, ever. You know, these are these are very low numbers yes. and really still reflect the fact that uh, uh, there's, there's plenty of work out there and more jobs than there are uh, workers to fit them at the moment. And as I said, despite two years of higher interest rates, uh, 13 interest rate increases and... Um, as, as we mentioned, we'll look at shortly, uh, the latest migration data shows us that, uh, you know, Australia's uh, conducting a, a flood of migrants at the moment. So uh, still a very robust economy um, and uh, not quite sure we're in the environment with these numbers to be cutting interest rates or even thinking about cutting interest rates going forward. But uh, Let's uh, take the blessings as they come, Michael. I think this is is, is very good, and and maybe it just shows that where interest rates are at the moment are, um, you know, doing their job. Uh, you know, as long as we can get inflation down uh, a bit lower, but I think a lot of that inflation story is out of our hands, um, particularly in relation to the price of oil. You know. Well, at the same time, the Australian Bureau of Statistics told us that our population is growing well it's actually more than growing andrew it's booming isn't it yes when we look at the uh the net annual migration numbers for australia um we had a net migration number of 547,228 over the year um last year which is a very very big number and when we look at it in the historical context you know not just in terms of the uh because we had not you know really no migration at all net migration at all through covid uh 2020 and 2021 and then the bounce back uh the bounce back occurred but you know we we take around about uh we get about around about 200,000 uh net migration per year um and even accounting for that you know we're 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 sort of ahead of the mark you know so uh, uh that's a good thing because we need workers and of course uh, more migrants uh, give us more energy uh, in terms of uh, capacity in our economy. But um, the problem we have uh, is, is that we can't house them. You know, we're, we're really finding a lot of problems with our undersupply exacerbated by these big um, these big numbers, uh, Michael. And uh, we're now seeing, when we look at the um, net migration figures on a state-by-state -state basis, uh, no surprise, Victoria and New South Wales are, uh, are leading the charge there with net uh, migration uh, now uh, at its peak in Victoria, has the highest number just ahead of New South Wales, uh, overall net migration. Uh, so uh, Victoria, some, perhaps some good news there with total uh, annual net migration. Uh, and now it's the highest of all the states. So uh, that'll create more demand for, for housing going forward and perhaps uh, give a bit more of a kick along to that Melbourne housing market, which uh, although still growing, hasn't uh, been recorded the strength of uh, uh, the other capital city markets, particularly um, Sydney, Adelaide, Brisbane and Perth. But uh, when we look at the, uh, the overseas migration, so this isn't the total migration, this is net overseas migration, we can see New South Wales continues to lead the charge there, uh, which is interesting because usually it's a Victoria uh, that has the, uh, the strength in terms of net overseas migration. Uh, the reason total migration is higher in New South Wales is because there's a, a net loss of uh, out-of-state migration, and that always brings the numbers uh, back in favour of Victoria. But uh, nonetheless, Victoria usually is the standard or has the highest perf performance for net overseas migration, and uh, perhaps more to come shortly there. And once again, that'll be a positive for the Melbourne housing market. But at the moment... Uh, certainly a factor driving um, uh, demand in that Sydney housing market. And as we've mentioned before, I, I think, you know, because we're going back uh, a year here, of course, it's the full year that uh, we still have expats coming back into that Sydney market, which is um, creating demand and pushing up prices. Uh, and when we look at interstate migration, not overseas, but net interstate migration, uh, Queensland's still clearly the leader there. You can see there New South Wales a net migration uh, falls as usual, um, and that uh, brings back the um, uh, the total migration numbers in favour of Victoria, which was uh, quite steady there. We're not seeing that loss of migration out of Victoria 
as we did through the uh, 2020 and 2021 COVID lockdown period, which of course we know was severe in Melbourne um, compared to the other capitals. But um, uh, Queensland's still charging ahead net annual migration of over 30,000. This is interstate migration. So it's a difference between people coming into the state and leaving the state. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, this is another product of or another reason why we're seeing very strong growth in rents and prices right throughout Queensland, but particularly in southeast Queensland. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen there that median prices are now starting to track those in Melbourne. The Brisbane median prices are now starting to track those in Melbourne, reflecting very strong growth over the past uh, few years. And we can see that when we look at the Queensland situation, how it has uh, evolved uh, with net annual net migration. So this is total migration um, from numbers that were typically around 50,000 uh, and last year were well over 100,000. So, of course, this is creating a lot of demand for housing and um, that means higher prices and higher rents, uh, uh, Michael, as we've seen, particularly in southeast Queensland and continuing, you know, as we speak. Well, as you say, these figures are, well, almost six months old now, even though they were only released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, last week. Having said that, the trend's only going to continue moving forward. Uh, high immigration and not enough houses being built, and that's just going to keep underpinning our housing markets. So that's the jeopardy. We need more workers, clearly, with the labour market. Um, but uh, we have these problems with housing. You know, the workers, we need, you know, many more workers, obviously. Um, but uh, with these low unemployment numbers. But, um, you know, we, we just have terrible problems, you know, uh, reflecting to some degree government policies of previous, uh, you know, previous years. And, uh, you know, what do you do? Do you put up with high rents and high prices and, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, not be unable to have the ec economic drive that you need uh, through, through uh, the current lack of workers? So... Um, a conundrum for the government, particularly considering it's facing an election next year. I just wanted to remind you that this is not specific investment advice because we don't know your personal circumstances, but we're more than happy to have a chat to help you take advantage of the opportunities the current property markets are offering. So why not have an obligation-free chat with one of the wealth strategists at Metropole to discuss your goals, your options, and what you could do. We're much more than just another buyer's agent. We help you safely create intergenerational wealth through strategic property and wealth advice. Remember, property investment's a process, not an event. So you can't just go out and buy any property and hope to be successful. In fact, now more than ever, getting the right advice is critical. So if you're looking to invest in property or buy a home, go to metropole.com.au and organize a time for an obligation-free chat you're going to find that at Metropole, we're big enough to tip the scales in your favour, but still small enough to care. And since we don't have any properties to sell, our advice is independent and unbiased. Well, I was starting to say it's been really chilly in Melbourne, where I am, Sydney, where you are, but it didn't stop people going out to the auctions on the weekend and putting up their hands. I don't think uh, buyers or sellers were that concerned about what the Reserve Bank's going to say this week, Andrew. No, it's interesting, Michael, because usually after the Queen's, or sorry, I nearly said it, didn't I? The King's Ooh. birthday weekend, old habits die hard, um, that uh, we start to see signs of a waning, you know, as the winter market uh, uh, begins. But uh, we didn't really see any sign of that at the weekend, which is the return from that uh, public holiday long weekend, the previous weekend. Um, it was still a very solid to strong uh, market. Uh, numbers were high. Um, and no sign yet of that uh, that winter market emerging, which just reflects how uh, really strong our, our markets are at the moment. And, um, um, you know, I think, again, we're likely to see uh, rates on hold. And so there's really nothing that the Reserve Bank, or there'll be no, I don't think, consequences from the Reserve Bank's meeting this coming week uh, in, in terms of, um, you know, implications for how the auction market is performing. But when we look at the raw data uh, or the results from the weekend, Sydney had 105 auctions, of course, well ahead of the previous holiday weekend. Um, quite, a, quite a reasonable clearance rate, again, above 70%, just above 70%, um, well below where it was a year ago, Michael, because that was the boom time market, of course, where we were getting 
In fact, that was the peak of the auction market last year, that 81.9% that Sydney recorded, which is a boom time result. And of course, that was when um, you know buyers were flooding back into the market, taking advantage of what were then lower prices. Um, but when we look at the auction numbers, Michael, check it out. It's 805 in Sydney um, last weekend versus 506 over the same post-holiday weekend last year, which, as I said, that they were the first signs that the market was starting to ease, as it usually does towards the end of June last year. But it, no sign um, this year so far. Strong result there for Sydney. Uh, Melbourne also 1,003 auctions. A clearance rate, um, you know, quite a reasonable clearance rate for Melbourne, again, in the mid-60s. Um, still a seller's market overall there, just uh, with that clearance rate. Uh, but again, you know, a significant increase in the number of listings um, in Melbourne at the weekend compared to the same post-holiday weekend last year. And, you know, the clearance rate not that far behind. Well, yes, OK, 10% behind, but uh, certainly holding the clearance rate despite those big uh, mid-winter, or not mid-winter, but early winter numbers. Brisbane numbers up strongly. Another uh, typically good result there for Brisbane. We know anything over 50% is positive for Brisbane. I keep saying the same thing, Michael. Look at those numbers compared to yes. the same time last year. Um, significantly higher in Brisbane. Um, but, of course, those clearance rates were at record levels in uh, in Brisbane a year ago. Adelaide, same old story we're saying here. Uh, good, solid to strong clearance rate in Adelaide. Highest of all the capitals, 75.8, as usual. Um, and numbers well ahead of the same time last year. And the clearance rate around about the same as where it was last year. Canberra market is uh, maybe, shall we say it, uh, on the rise, 66% uh, clearance rate. Canberra certainly had a couple of good weekends. Uh, above 60% with the clearance rate. We know that Canberra market faded over the uh, the uh, second part of last year. It disengaged itself from Sydney, which it usually tracks. Um, but again, big numbers of auctions in, in Canberra, 60 auctions versus 32 the same time last year. And the Canberra clearance rate was higher, significantly higher than where it was, 10% uh, higher a year ago, nearly. So look, I mean, you know, no sign of any winter winter emerging there in the markets on that data, Michael. And, um, you know, we uh, I've, I've also had a sneak preview of next weekend and numbers are still looking quite uh, healthy for next weekend, which, of course, will be the, um, uh, well, the second last weekend in June. But but it's uh, no sign yet of, of the market easing. And uh, we can see those trends are holding up when we look at the... Um, when we look at the, uh, the monthly uh, clearance rates so far, in Sydney, still above 70%. Um, so around about where it's been for most of this year. Uh, the Melbourne market, a little bit higher so far in June compared to May, pushing uh, into the mid-60s. Uh, Brisbane, as we said, is a is a 50% market when it's performing solidly. It's remaining there, a little bit lower than where it's been over previous months, but still a good market there for sellers in Brisbane. Uh, Adelaide's not reporting those... Uh, 80% clearance rate that we got quite used to in Adelaide a year ago, um, but still close to 80%, a very good market there for sellers. And the Canberra market, well, you know, can we say it uh, that we've been saying that the following weeks or the next, or the, the, the early weeks in June would tell the story about the Canberra market. But so far this month, Michael, uh, Canberra clearance rate at 63.1%, which is the highest um, we've had uh, in nearly a year, you know. So, uh, uh, it's uh, a market perhaps that's uh, on the march, uh, offers a lot of value, of course, because it's been a weaker market compared to the other capitals. So maybe those, uh, maybe those uh, value uh, perceptions and realities are starting to work uh, in the buyer's mindset in Canberra. But uh, we still need a few more weeks to be able to call that. And of course, we will be moving into the, uh, uh, the real midwinter market shortly. If you want to look at those um, capital city auction clearance rates, we put out the snapshot uh, on my LinkedIn account, Doc Andrew Wilson, every Saturday uh, evening at around about 6.30 p.m. And, of course, Michael publishes uh, the full uh, national auction market report on a Sunday, which has the, uh, the uh, regional breakdowns for Melbourne and Sydney and the top 10 sales in each of the capital cities for Saturday under the hammer. And just reiterating what we've been saying, and we show this graphic every week, Michael, which I think sort of puts it all together, that even though clearance rates <clears throat> are a little lower than where they were a year ago, uh, the actual numbers of properties that are coming into the market are at record levels 
and that's that's bringing its record sales and uh, sale actual auction sales so far this year are up by uh, 30 percent nearly in sydney up by over 20 percent in melbourne up in brisbane 13 percent adelaide 12 percent and canberra now is recording higher sales this year compared to the same period last year so more positive signs there for that canberra market michael so all this despite you know, all those interest rate increases and all the claims of doom and gloom. Um, you know, as I say, I think it's the auction sales graphic is uh, or numbers are very important because they show us that we're actually seeing record numbers of, uh, of sales, of auction sales for this time of the year. Um, so it's a, certainly a market that could be characterised as being pretty confident both for buyers and sellers. Well, that's what I like about looking at the auction results and more importantly, the trends, because it gives us an in-time indication of what's going on. But it also gives us a look at what's likely to happen in the future yes. when auction clearance rates remain high. It's going to underpin property values and there's no sign at the moment that there's going to be any fall in the slow but steady growth of our housing markets, Andrew. Yeah, that's right, Mike. And that's what we want, you know, flatter interest rates, um, you know, uh, interest rates on hold mean that we won't see the variations in prices, you know, and then the, you know, the, the ripple effect that takes some time to be subdued. Um, and that's a good thing for certainty and predictability in our housing markets. But the big news out of those auction markets is the winter market is continuing to produce, early winter, of course, continuing to produce autumn-like results, you know. And as I right. said, speak Peak looks like we're going to have more big numbers next weekend. Um, so there's plenty of confidence in the market. And we have seen a big rush of sellers I I this year. And, um, you know, so, uh, buyers are quite happy to uh, secure the property. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not a rush to the market. To uh, to get out, it's it's actually yeah I like this market. Well, a lot of those sellers are buyers, Andrew. They're right. upgrading, they're downgrading, they're moving yes. their lifestyle, they're getting to a different stage of their life. So it, it's not desperate sellers. It's not the mortgagee sales that the property pessimists were warning us we were going to get. Yeah, yeah all wrong again. And of course, they're all, this is all supported by a booming economy and strong migration. We just don't have enough houses, unfortunately. Well, that's that's the fact. Look forward to catching up with you again next week to see what the news brings us. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Michael.